All right. So our plan today is I'm going to go over a lecture on posture, and then we're going to bring a couple people up to kind of evaluate posture as a class so we can begin to kind of apply some of the information that I talked about in the lecture. And then I have um, a form, a test called the Riedco that I'll hand out to you, and that's something that I'm going to have you do in practicum with your patients. Um, and maybe I'll just talk a little bit about that to begin with, just because when we get into lab, to get everybody pulled back together, maybe, maybe more of an issue. So the Riedco is a test that um, we use for posture. Um, and you know what? I'm going to go ahead and hand this out. Do you want to? Yep. Did you make enough that I can keep one? Well, but we have four people, so we're good. Okay, so it goes down through the different components, head, shoulders, spine, hips, ankles, neck, upper back, trunk, abdomen, and lower back. And it has a grading scale on it. And so what I want you to do is pick one patient. It does not have to be your patient at practicum because maybe your, your particular patient has really good posture. Um, but find a patient at any of your practicum sites. It doesn't have to be at the Keel Center. And then what I want you to do is go through and score it, and we can spend a little bit more time talking about it later. But I want you to go through and score it, and then what I want you to do is pick some of the um, concerns that you have with your patient's posture and alignment, and I want you to write three interventions that you would do to address those things. And they can just be right on the back. Nothing formal, just, you can just write it on the back. So on the front, you're going to talk about the things that you found with your patient, and then on the back, write three interventions to address those issues. So, and in terms of turning it in, um, boy, I don't know. Don't well, you? they only have one day next week in practicum. Yeah. So I would say... Maybe by the following Friday. If some of you have trouble getting with a particular practicum patient to do that, let me know. But let's kind of plan on not next Friday, but the following Friday. Anybody have a date on that? 26. That's we have um, <laughs> we have practicals that day, so just have it in by Friday in Janet's folder. Okay, so 2:26. And just put it in my folder there in the front there by Bobby's desk. Article reviews are that day two in my folder. All right. Do that. And then um, the last thing we're going to do is go back in the lab and work on analyzing faulty posture. Um, did you guys all print out the other handout on postural analysis? Okay, some of you did, some did. Okay, how many don't have it? Oh boy. Okay. So I wonder. Do you want to make copies? How many do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16. Wow. Okay. Okay. Do you want it back to back? Definitely back to back. That's, yeah, that's important. Thank you for doing that. Okay, so let's get started with this. Okay, so this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to define posture, look at some of the determinants of posture look at postural alignment from different angles so that we can see um, how our patient is either in alignment with that or out of alignment and has some faulty posture issues with it. We're going to perform a postural exam looking from those different positions and identify some of the postural deviations that we've already identified in some of you um, in lab <laughs> in here. Um, look at some of those um, postural deviations in light of muscle length imbalances, because that's an important concept to understand, and then begin to talk about treatment interventions, and that's really what your assignment's going to be, to look at some treatment interventions to begin to correct that. Um, Kendall does a great job, um, lots and lots of good references in there and explanations for different types of postural um, compensations and postural deviations with that. So that's kind of what we're going to do. 
So when we talk about good posture, it contributes to the well-being of the individual. If you're standing up straight, you're in good postural alignment, you know, you're breathing better, you're functioning better, you're more alert. Good posture is, is really for our well-being with that. And when we talk about faulty posture, it's not only just an aesthetic problem. Like you might see somebody walking, you know, in a very kyphotic position, um, and you might say, wow, you know, look at their posture. But with them being in that kyphotic position, that might also be affecting their breathing, their respiratory status with it, um, might be impacting a lot of different things. So it's, you need to recognize that it is not only just an aesthetic issue. Um, it can cause discomfort, it can cause pain, um, and disability depending on how severe it is. So those are kind of some things that we're going to look at with that. So tell me what you think when you think of posture. What would you consider a definition for posture? Right. Shoulders back. Okay, shoulders back. <clears throat> Expand on that a little bit more just in terms of more generically. I guess standing up tall. Okay, up. standing up tall. Yeah. Uh, the alignment of a person during resting. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, so here's just a few different definitions that we might look at or kind of statements on that. Um, and that kind of builds on what they said. Kind of the position of the person's body or body parts when you're sitting or standing. Um, the arrangement of the parts of the body, that's out of your book, out of Kendall's book. Um, you composite of uh, the positions of the joints of the body at any given movement or at any given moment, and the static the posture of postural alignment. We talk about the positions of the various joints in the body segments, and we'll get into that when we're actually looking at the plumb line uh, for posture analysis. So, looking at how the joints line up and how the body segments are kind of stacked on top of each other with that. So, characteristics of good posture, looking at the state of muscular and skeletal balance, and it is a balance, those really go hand in hand together with that. So, looking at protecting supporting structures of the body against injury or progressive deformity. One of the big things that I always think about because I work with a lot of stroke patients is knee hyperextension. And so, you've got a patient that because of the muscle imbalance that they have, they tend to hyperextend the knee. The more the height they hyperextend it, the more they um, develop a lot of ligament laxity in the posterior knee. And then it just kind of becomes this, you know, spiraling cyclic thing where, you know, they're putting more stress on it. When they stand and walk, they push back in hyperextension because their quad is weak. And so it just becomes more and more of an issue with them. And we see that a lot with both our adult and our pediatric stroke patients. But this can apply to athletes. This can apply to a variety of patients we might have on our caseload. Um, so if we can be in good alignment, have our muscles functioning the way they were designed to because our skeletal alignment is good, then that's going to help um, stabilize and support our body and help prevent injury. That's one reason all of you guys who are in sports they do so much with strengthening, conditioning, stretching, all of that, so that you're in the best alignment for your muscles to work and to prevent injury um, to your joints and to your muscles. Um, optimal positions um, are afforded for the thoracic and abdominal organs. That's something that we don't often think about, but when we're in really good alignment, we not only are in a better position to protect our organs and our body, but for them to function well. And again, I go back to respiratory function. I've had a lot of, thanks for doing that. I've had a lot of classes with um, Mary Massery, who is a physical therapist who specializes in respiratory um, conditions with her patients of all types, of athletes, of patients with neurological compromise. And it really has brought home to me how important the respiratory system is and how we as PTs are probably in one of the best positions to work with our patients on that because we understand muscles probably better than any other discipline out there. And so if we can get our patients in the optimum alignment, 
um, they're going to be able to breathe better, and if you're going to be able to breathe better, you're going to be able to function a little bit better. So our patients that are, you know, have very protracted scapulae and are, are sitting like this are not getting a good deep breath. Our patients who have had, um, let's say, um, cardiac surgery, like a lot of my infants have had cardiac surgery where they've actually cut down through the sternum and opened them up. And so they hurt when they come out of surgery and they don't want to, they want to stay in this position to protect themselves. And over time, the scar tightens up, their muscles tighten up, and they can't get a good deep breath with it. So alignment is so very important to that population. Also, the importance at the other end of our body for pelvic floor function. And that's something that Mimi works with. Um, and through Mary Massery's work, she feels like it's just one set of valves all the way up and down the system. And the importance of having that postural alignment and the good function with that impacts your whole body all the way up and down. So I don't know if you want to comment any on the tie-in with... Um, we just had floor. a clinician, Julie Weeb, come, and she's international speaker with regards to um, dynam dynamic pelvic floor, and it all is very posture related um, as far as the pelvic floor. So you don't have to be a pelvic floor therapist to um, start doing these types of interventions with your patients. It starts with the posture, aligning the ribs over the pelvis properly, and getting the transverse abdominis, the diaphragm, the pelvic floor, and the multifidus, those, those four muscles working together as a team. If any of them are isolating or stuck, um, you're going to have problems with the pelvic floor, with core strength, with back pain, all of those different things. So the posture is so important for those people. Um, runners that have incontinence, changing their posture, changing, changing the way they run can cause the incontinence to just go away, okay? By just giving them some easy tips and cues in how to change their posture. So what we're learning, um, this is just really important, a great foundation for U.S. therapists. And to build on what Mimi said, um, we had a speaker come in. There's a specialist down in the Quad Cities with Genesis Health Group that um, does pelvic floor dysfunction with kids for incontinence issues with kids. And she came up and did a lecture, and we combined our women's health group and our pediatric specialty group together and had Tara present on that information. And again, she's talking about postural alignment because all of that affects and your strength and everything in all of those muscles really has an impact. And incontinence can be a big factor, you know, to, to really compromise a person's, what do I want to say, willingness to go out into the community if you're afraid you're going to have an accident or if you're a child and maybe, you know, even upwards into like middle school or something and you're still having accidents. All of those are big issues, and I don't think that's something, respiratory and pelvic floor dysfunction, I don't think is something that the average person thinks of when we think of posture. So that's why I really wanted to make sure that, you know, that we tied that in, because it does make a big difference, because all those organs are inside, and if things aren't in proper alignment and we don't have the proper muscle strength and balance, that is definitely going to impact um, that. Um, okay, so looking at some of the characteristics of poor posture, we talk about faulty relationships of the various parts of the body, and that's kind of the handout that we're going to work off of, um, looking at analyzing and how we might set up treatment for some of those faulty postures. Um, also, when things are out of alignment, it produces increased strain on the supporting structures. So if you're, if you're walking in a crouched position, because you've got some muscle tightness or maybe because you've got some neurological issues, you've got a lot more stress and strain put on your muscles and your ligaments because now they have to work harder. If you're in the optimal alignment, and again we'll talk about that with the plumb lines, um, if you're in the optimal alignment, that's the best position for your muscles to function. So if you're out of that alignment in any way, that's putting stress on the supporting structures. And less, less efficient balance 
um, of just in general of your body, you've got to work harder in those other positions. So that's another reason why we really want to make sure that we're giving our patients in the best possible posture and alignment that we can. So when we're looking at that, we need to have a, a good understanding of underlying influences, which Mimi and I have already laid the groundwork for that in some of the stuff that we've been doing with muscle lug testing and just manual muscle testing, different positions, goniometry, all of that plays into your ability to figure out what the problem is with the posture. So we're looking at good body mechanics with alignment and muscle balance. So kind of analyzing that and looking at that component of it and the alignment and muscle balance really go hand in hand. Um, looking at range of motion because we want adequate range of motion and you guys have all learned or hopefully have all learned before Monday when you're possibly tested on that um, what your appropriate range of motion is for each joint. Um, the thing to keep in mind is the more flexibility you have, the less stability you have. So for those of you who are very hypermobile and have a lot of excess movement at the joints, you have less stability there, and you guys know that. Um, I tend to think of my um, kids that fall into the category of low muscle tone, that are kind of the floppy, what we call the floppy individuals. They tend to have lower muscle tone, the endurance in the muscle is not as good, their strength and endurance is decreased, and they have a lot more flexibility at their joints. So it's really a lot harder for them to be able to work up against gravity because they just aren't as stable as people who have more normal muscle tone and, and normal range of motion. So um, the more stability you have, it can also work the other way. You may have limitations in your joints um, and you may be more stable at your joints, but that gives you less flexibility. So we want to kind of get our patients somewhere in the middle with that so that they've got the flexibility, but they've also got the stability there. And these are really examples more at either end of the spectrum with the greater flexibility, less stability, the more stability, less flexibility. So that's kind of where we want to be with that. Um, when we look at trying to decide what we're going to do for correction of those postural faults. We're looking at different treatment procedures with that, looking at trying to restore the good body mechanics with that. That might mean um, strengthening some muscles, stretching some muscles, um, just getting everything back, um, back into alignment again. Um, also maintenance of good body mechanics and posture and movements. So it's one thing to get them looking good in a static standing position or a static sitting position, but how much do we function there? We don't, we're dynamic, we're moving, we're constantly changing position, moving in and out of different positions. So we've got to be able to maintain that good body mechanics in posture and movement. So um, we may start with static posture, teach them, we might have them up against the wall doing something, um, to get them in better alignment and then have them step away. I know one particular patient at practicum, that's kind of the way we worked with him because his postural alignment was so poor. So we had him up against the wall, getting in a good position with a nice chin tuck and then having him take a step away and seeing if he could maintain that position. And initially he couldn't. As soon as he stepped away, his posture kind of fell apart, but he's progressively gotten better with that. Um, so working towards that dynamic movement piece of it. And then looking at preventative measures and education. A lot of what we do, and you guys already know that, is educating our patients. So selling them on the reasons of why we want to be in good alignment and the importance of that. And then um, preventative measures to, if they've come in with pain because of faulty posture, um, teaching them the correct ways so that hopefully you can prevent some additional problems with that. Okay, so the dilemma that we see with our patients who have pain with postural faults is the fact that sometimes people can have faulty posture um, without any pain. So they can come in looking, you know, very much out of alignment and you ask them if they're in pain and they don't have any pain with it. But then you may have the others 